Johnny here for Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. I've got a special treat. I've got the Santa Cruz right behind me. So this is the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. Um, you know, I, I've got a pretty positive review on this and we're gonna go everything from the key to the motor, to the trunk, to the inside. We're gonna cover it all today. So, you know, hit like and subscribe early on to help get this video out there. Now let's just jump right in, put the pedal to the metal and review the Santa Cruz. Okay, so let's start off first off with the key. Even the key is pretty stylish. Give you a little close up on that. So you've got a nice little key, lock, unlock, tailgate, um, remote start. Now, there are definitely some things that I, I'm very curious as to why the Santa Cruz has certain design elements, but you know, that's different folks for different st strokes. Let's start with what I do find very interesting, and that's two things that are up at the front of the vehicle. So we're gonna start with the compliment sandwich. I'll start with a whole lot of good, a little bit of bad and ugly, you know, the meat, and then we'll finish off with some positive. I do love the front lines on this vehicle. Now they are, in my opinion, more car-like, but the Santa Cruz has absolutely a unique styling. I'm not seeing this from any other manufacturer where the lights are really part of the grill. So let's try to light those up. Well, anyways, your lights are right here. Uh, they're very sharp. They're part of the grill. You've got some, you know, pretty attractive fog lights on the bottom. Now there, there is a bit of like a 3D movement going in. So I find that's interesting. They've really, the lights aren't just, you know, happen to be put there last minute. It's really part of the design element. It's layered very much. You could say that this vehicle has a layered design throughout the inside. It feels very layered. 3D, so it's got an, an attractive design that pops. Now this style isn't gonna be for everyone. If you're looking for uh, a, sm a smaller truck that's got a truck look, I definitely say this has more of a car look, but it does definitely have a very unique, very cool design. They're trying something new and I applaud them, applaud them for that. They're not just, you know, looking at another manufacturer that has quite a bit of popularity and then building a design that's similar. So we'll just continue along the grill. You've got, you know, a big grill here. You got the, the huge H. Um, I have mixed feelings about that. I'm not necessarily a guy that loves a huge logo on a vehicle, but I am loving the integrated lights into the dash. You don't even notice that it has headlamps, but they're there and that is so cool. That's that's, I'd say this vehicle has more of a, a futuristic look to it, whereas the Maverick has more of a, a new truck look. You can definitely see some very classic truck elements to the Maverick. It fits in with the Ford line, whereas this has got some, some more futuristic styling. We'll go off to the side now for one of the things on the outside that I'm not a huge fan of. This right here. I understand plastic on the sides, that's very smart. That's, that's good business because stones, like we're on right here, you do any gravel roads, you're driving in the winter where instead of sand, they put down little rocks like in my area and these areas rust up super quick because you've got one rust warranty. In regards to rust, you've got to guarantee that it will rust if there's no more paint on the metal. Well, this is covering the metal, but design wise, I'm not a fan because it's very thick it has this, you know, random up motion to it. I, I don't feel that fits. And I'm not sure why they textured it with these little triangles. Um, maybe the designer was a big fan of The Legend of Zelda, but there's, you know, far too many of these little triangles here. I don't understand why that was added on. I don't feel this needs to be textured. However, it does fit in with all the triangles that are present on the mag and that is a very good mag it's an attractive mag now they didn't make the black quite as you know often what's popular is shiny black this is painted black but it does mix really well with your with the this silver right here so it's got a good look very smart that the bottom is plastic once again for avoiding rust now if you ask marie pierre she'll say that uh, i think she was telling me the side of the vehicle was far too car-like for her. And you can see, you know, the triangles that were inlaid on that plastic, well, there's a lot of triangle shapes 
you know, Marie Pia was sort of saying that she's not a huge fan of this triangle right here. Well, that's, you know, comes down to style. Some people are absolutely going to love it. And if it's not for you, well, there's other options on the market. You know, we have a capitalist system. So it's good that there's competition. There's good that there's options. And this might not be for you just because of that triangular styling that we see all the way through the vehicle. I, you know, personally, I'm applauding uh, the Santa Cruz for trying something new for not just copying an existing design on a popular vehicle at another manufacturer um, which reminds me you know that goes back to i think it was the late 90s early 2000s i can think of a certain manufacturer that jaguar was wanting and trying to sue because you know the vehicle looked identical pretty much to a jaguar but i don't want to get into all that we're, we're getting out of the, the meat of the sandwich. Let's go back to the compliments. We've got the back end right here. This is very cool. You've got your hard cover right here. Uh, and it's, it comes with the vehicle from what I can tell. Sorry for the noise, but I had to show you. That's incredible. Now, the depth of the box, it, I feel like it could be a little higher, but that's all right, you know? And the length, the length's not bad. You do have these tie down hooks. You have hooks all over. You've got these rails here. This is very, very smart. You've got these on the Maverick as well when you get a, an XLT luxury pack. So the rails here, all the hooks, all great points. The box is only slightly smaller than the Maverick's truck box so this truck box is at 4.3 so four feet three inches the maverick off the top of my head is four feet five possibly six inches so i'll expect the comments section to help me out with that we're a community here and we're all working together to get as much information as we possibly can but this back window it looks good you've got again of course an angle here this vehicle has a lot of triangular design to it and the back window from the back looks big and it looks like you've got great vision mind you from the inside you can tell that the height of the seats and then with the headrests from the inside this window is actually quite small so that's a little i know i'm nitpicking but i'm trying to point out all the great stuff as well as the stuff that might bother you it doesn't mean that the model isn't good i'd actually say the model is very good but it is important important to point out all the positive elements and all the potential um you know sort of the thorns in your side you could say now let's just continue right on drop this tailgate down or do we have to because you got this right here you got your foot spot i i am i'm liking this the truck does have it's is easy easy to grab anywhere you are around the box you can easily grab stuff out of the box but i love that you can quickly and easily climb in easier access and you've got a box you can get in and out of very easily. Mind you, the getting out of part, well, you don't have that spot anymore. That is on a piston, that's great. For the price of the vehicle, I do expect it to have some things that the Maverick won't have. It has to, it's thousands of dollars more than an XL or XLT, so it's gotta have some nice little extra features. Now, looking at the back lights here, you got a design that fits with the vehicle. So if the design's not for you, that's okay. But if you do like the triangular design, of course, it's reoccurring in the lights here. You've got, you know, a mix of triangles and a rectangle. So the lights really fit in with the overall design of the vehicle. It's got embedded in the box, metal, Santa Cruz. I think that's awesome. Uh, I really, really am digging this. Uh, you know, uh, on the Ranger, the F-150s, uh, I'll say it over and over again that I love that element. And the Santa Cruz has adopted it, so very truck-like of them. They put Hyundai on the little handle here. But the handle, don't be mistaken, it's not for opening. Of course, there's a little digital push button, which just means if your battery's dead, though, don't expect to get into the box. You got more of these, you know, they're so into the triangles. I think maybe they're getting paid by uh, the triangle company of, uh, of Korea. They're getting paid per triangle, so they slammed on some more triangles right here. But gosh, does this ever have triangles? They're loving it, but at least there's a utility here. It's for grip. So ice 
can get in between and you can still have a little bit of grip. So here it makes sense. On the wheel wells, the triangles make no sense. And this is why I'm thinking there must be some sort of, you know, triangle mafia paying them off to put more triangles on the vehicle. So they've been paid per triangle, but let's continue. Enough with that cheesy joke. There's a cap, not a big deal. Cord goes capless. I do like that they've added the little thing so you don't lose it. So nothing, nothing wrong, nothing good, nothing remarkable going on there, but let's jump right in to check that back seat space. So you've got USB ports in the back, very useful. You've got more shiny black stuff for your kids to put fingerprints and juice stains all over. I love how it looks when buying and test driving, but later on, this might be a point that bothers you when you feel you have to clean the interior of your vehicle because it's, you know, already I'm getting it all, all uh, spotted up. Nice little basket here, useful space. Now, it's, it's just enough space that as an adult, Got my shoes on, 5'10", and I'm comfortable. Now, if I were a standard YouTuber, I don't know how I got this job because I'm not 6'3", and I feel like every review video I watch almost starts with something along the lines of, and uh, here I am at 6'2", or 6'4". Well, that's not me, and I can't help that, sorry. But I do appreciate someone in the comments section said I should get three beefy men to sit in the back, to sit in a Maverick. But uh, I'm worried that if I put, uh, I don't know any beefy six foot three men, and I'm pretty sure if I put an, uh, a little advertisement on Craigslist asking for, uh, saying that I'm seeking out beefy men, I'm worried about the results that I'll, uh, the type of phone calls and emails I'll get. So, sorry, not six foot three, but I am comfortable in here. Now when I close the door, this line right here does cut off a bit of my vision. My, my vision. Now, if you're in the city, you probably don't want to see what's going on anyways because it's just traffic and frustrating. But if you're out in the countryside like I am at the moment, it is awfully nice to see the, the leaves change. And this does cut a bit of your view and it makes for a very high door. So I don't feel like this is a design element that works for me. But, you know, if you have a kid, let's say, who, who gets car sick, that is going to cut their vision and have them looking outside. So there's, you know, there's, there's a pro and a con to everything and you just gotta find what works for you. Now, if you do come in a little closer, we'll see that back window, what I was talking about. That's, that's not leaving a whole lot of space visually. Mind you, the seats are really comfortable. I would definitely take a six hour, seven hour trip sitting in the back of this as an adult. I'm very comfortable. I've got Headspace, I feel that, you know, when I tested it on the Maverick, I feel like I had just a little more headspace based on where the seat was and the ceiling was. I'd say I had about, yay, amount of space difference. Just a little bit less headspace in this, but still, tons left over for me. 5'10", I've got a good, I'd say four inches left over. So I am loving the interior of this vehicle and actually, the interior I'd give it a 10 out of 10 uh, I've sat and driven you know BMWs Mercedes and you know of course in those vehicles I don't have anything negative to say but I, I can't find anything negative in this it's I'm very comfortable it's very well finished so now let's hear from Marie. Now she's been along the ride for a lot of my car purchases and she also used to work at Toyota and prior to that she was a teacher for several years. So really important to hear her perspective. I really value her opinion and I hope that you enjoy what she has to say about the Santa Cruz. So how do you find the interior so far? Uh, it looks nice. Uh, the, the steering wheel is so soft. Uh, I find it beautiful. I'm not sure about the outside, the lines uh, on the door, but the inside is uh, perfect. It's very, uh, very cute. I have to agree with Marie Pia. The inside of the Hyundai is fantastic. Er, 
pun day, sorry. Uh, the inside's just fantastic. It looks really sharp. The digital screens are really nice. Now I'm gonna be playing around with them to really test out how responsive they are. But the inside's really sharp, um, which I had hoped and actually expected it to be. You know, it is more expensive than the Maverick. Uh, this doesn't quite fall into the same price range, at least not the starting price, that's for sure. There's thousands of dollars of difference but the interior is fantastic. I have nothing negative that I can say. The design is gorgeous. It's all very smooth. Uh, you know, everything's just, it's tight. It's, it's got a good solid look. Uh, very comfortable interior. One small uh, thing is if you're sitting in the back, the exterior design is pretty cool. Um, with you know with the rear window that lifts up right here but if you're sitting in the back for for kids or smaller people or even for me you know I'm looking out if I put my head back against the headrest I don't really see what's going on to the side of me not a major issue um, but you know nonetheless worth pointing out mind you the armrest is a little low but the seats are very comfortable I could spend hours in this vehicle. I really love uh, all these buttons here. It's so close from you. It's easy. Um, what I love and don't love at the same time is the shiny finish. It's beautiful, but I see uh, dust easily on it. So I think it's the, the thing that you need to um, uh, wash often to don't see dust. And what's interesting is that uh, the Santa Cruz has paddle shift here. So uh, they didn't sell that often in a truck. So that's a, a good point. Like John says, maybe it's, the interior looks more like a car. So, uh, but I really love that. So we've got a good backup camera. I've seen a lot worse out of different manufacturers. And the screen over here, if you notice, is very cool. Very sharp looking uh, screen. Showing you all the information you need. You've got, you know, your digital speed as well as your RPM. There's that dust that would bug Marie-Pierre on a regular basis. Yeah, and Marie-Pierre right off, being that she likes things clean and neat. The fingerprints all over this shiny black. It looks amazing when it's new and you're test driving it, but it will drive her up a wall on a regular day-to-day -day ownership basis. It looks amazing, but yeah, problematic for keeping clean. I do love how, you know, they've got soft touch fabric. So it's not just fabric. There's actually a bit of cushioning to it. And they've put soft touch pretty much everywhere so very classy sharp finish you know tight lines this this is an extremely sharp okay, so interior. here on the santa cruz we have the front seat all the way back which meant that i couldn't even touch the end i was missing about an inch or two for my feet to be flat against the front so all the way back it's the way someone would sit if they're six foot four six foot five there's not enough room left for an adult but I don't know how many passengers are going to be sitting there and be six foot four. So I don't think that's an issue for very many people. And while you don't have the huge bins for, you know, a liter of, you know, if you're going hiking or whatnot, the Maverick, you can drop in, you know, a thermos that, you know, can carry a liter. You can really put in a big drink in the doors and the doors on the Maverick, you can even slide in a bike. They're made for the back tire or front tire of a bike to just slide right in. So I find that there's very smart design element, useful design element on the Maverick, but I am really happy to see that Santa Cruz here has bins. Now, if I owned this vehicle, I'd relocate this. Uh, because I'd actually want to use these bins for, you know, when I'm going off mountain biking or fishing or whatever it may be, uh, any one of my hobbies, I'd want this space available. Okay, so now it's my turn to take this out on a test drive. Good vision out the windows, thankfully. Otherwise, I could take out a bicyclist by accident. But good vision. The door sill is a little higher. I do always like to drive with my elbow up. So it's just a little high, but I'm not the tallest person. 
steering wheel, like Marie Pierre said, does feel good. Now this is the 2.5 liter turbo. This is the motor I like, 281 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque. But so much comes down to how that transmission is going to apply the power. So let's go take it up through a, through a, a few bendies and on the highway to really test out this motor. Thinking, you know, looking at the stats, I'm thinking, my impression is that it should be great. But I've also had vehicles with similar power uh, that had CVTs that I didn't like at all. I do love the Mavericks eCVT. It drove fantastically. That's, that's, got, that's got some good pedal to the metal action. A little bit of body roll, but nothing nothing to complain about. Nothing bad at all. Now, well, let's see if I had to merge in an emergency on the highway. That's pretty fast. Takes a bump very well. You don't feel the bumps in the steering wheel. The vehicle's not jolted when I hit a you know, considerable uh, division in the road. So not drawn left or right. The drive feels tight. I like that. The acceleration was good. I, I thought, I expected a little more with 311 pound feet of torque. Expected just a little more, but uh, definitely good for my day to day. No, takes, uh, takes the bumps well. There is a bit left, right. Just a little bit when we take bumps. Going to the corner here at 65 miles per hour. Took a bump in the corner, didn't get jolted around. Let's thank, thankfully, independent suspension resolves the whole issue of getting jolted around when you hit a bump in a corner. Steering wheel's precise, effective. puts the power to the wheels well. I like it. Now the suspension, I'm noticing that it's making noise. You hear the suspension just like on the Maverick. There is a little bit more body roll left and right, but I'm not noticing any body roll front and back when I step on it. We'll have to check the brakes, see how it does under braking. Oh, very nice in the bendies. Blind spot detection works well, talks to you, lets you know that if you pull out, you will be in a world of hurt. This does speed without feeling like you're doing speed, which is nice. That's, that's a good sign of a comfortable suspension a well-made suspension and it brakes and accelerates without you know with very little front and back you know front and back motion a little bit of left and right really bad bumps a little bit of left and right nothing nothing to really compl properly complain about and it's got the right amount of power to safely move you in and out of situations you know power isn't just it's not about drag racing power is about safety it's about being able to get you out of a situation or get you into the situation you need to be in to be safe and this has it i would not get a 2.5 liter without the turbo i feel like the weight of this vehicle this does weigh more it's got two inches less box than the Maverick, but it weighs more. If I recall correctly, it's about 500 pounds difference. Um, I wouldn't take this without the 2.5 liter turbo engine, but I do really, really like the 2.5 liter turbo engine. Not, I, mean, I can just say the 2.5 liter without the turbo, without the nice little T in the back, isn't for me. That's, that's all I'll say about that. Now I feel like the sunroof on this from recollection, this is smaller than the Mavericks. 
sunroof yeah definitely smaller than the maverick sunroof but it's it's a nice interior i like the right here the shifter perfect spot to leave my hand on good air conditioning very good air conditioning no complaints on that now let's go find that uh, bumpy road so here we have a very bumpy road let's see how the suspension performs well i have to say i'm really pleasantly surprised this suspension goes with the price of the vehicle this is a very good suspension takes the bumps quite well and I can maybe understand a little and accept a little more that left right roll that I felt in the corners it was slight somewhat of a left right roll but it takes bumps really well I'm not uh, disappointed on how this handles or how this drives good suspension very good acceleration on the 2.5 liter turbo so this concludes the video on the Santa Cruz. Uh, overall, we really liked it. Uh, I think we talked about it and we'd give it about, you know, an eight. We're, you know, nothing really major that bothered us with it. A whole lot that we really liked. Um, you know, little size comparison here. It's a good size. It's going to be the perfect truck for city dwellers uh, and for, you know, weekend warriors. Now the box, it is just a little smaller than the Mavericks. Um, the styling, it, you know, to each their own. Some people maybe will bother them that it shares styling with the Tucson. No matter what though, I think everyone will absolutely love the interior. 10 out of 10 with a slight reservation on that back window. Now from the outside, it does give some really nice styling cue, but from the inside, it cuts off a little bit of the vision. But Marie was very happy driving and sitting in that driver's seat. It's a, a, it's a very good uh, truck. Now, coming up, stay tuned, like, and subscribe to not miss out because, you know, Winston will review that uh, top-down driving. And, uh, of course, I will get around to doing the comparisons between my Badlands and, you know, a Big Ben with Sasquatch. Is it really worth it? We will cover the Escape. All the footage for the Escape is already filmed for that new Escape plugin, which is the future at Ford. And then I'll be getting around to doing more Bronco content. So I wish you all more cars and more power. And I do wish you a fantastic week. Now, speaking of fantastic things this week, these are my favorite memes of the week. So I've borrowed these and just wanted to showcase these because I got a good little chuckle out of these. They make a, a whole lot of sense to me. So I wish you all, you know, a great week. Hope you get to put the pedal to the metal. And until next time, have a good one.